topic is mutual inductance and uh, we have defined it already mutual inductance mutual inductance so mutual induction and then uh, mutual inductance or coefficient of mutual induction mutual induction so two factors mutual inductance depend upon the geometry of two coils the first factor is geometry second factor is number of turns that is the number of turns in primary and secondary coils and third factor is orientation between the coils so how your coils are arranged that also matters so two coils are placed uh, uh, just in nearer to each other uh, i am just citing one example so if you have coil like this this is first coil and this is second coil then magnetic field lines some of the magnetic field lines can pass through this also okay and uh, if you place the two coils one like this and another like this then uh, no flux will be linked because magnetic field of this solenoid is along this direction and uh, area vector is along this direction so b dot a b a cos theta magnetic flux linked with the second coil secondary will be zero so here no mutual induction so no uh, mutual induction phenomena will take place and if you are placing the coil this is one coil the another coil is inside it so this is the case when mutual induction phenomena will be highest that is the two coils are placed one above the other so the magnetic field lines of the first coil suppose you are sending current through this coil then magnetic field lines of the first coil will be linked with the second coil also and so maximum field lines are linked with the second coil if it is s1 this is s2 then uh, uh, that depends upon flux also depends upon number of turns so number of turns in secondary if it is more then flux through secondary will be more nba so mutual induction phenomena will be prominent dominate if the orientation between the coil is as shown in the third figure so this is figure a this is figure b and this is figure c so highest the phenomena mutual induction will be mutual induction will be more in orientation c in orientation c because maximum field lines are linked with the secondary but here uh, flux is zero no flux will be linked with the secondary one and uh, in first case the flux is there but uh, maximum field lines may not be linked depending upon the separation between the two coils the more is the separation the less will be the flux linked with the secondary coil this is primary this is secondary this is primary this is secondary okay so mutual induction depends upon orientation between relative orientation between the coils and uh, the first factor is uh, geometry of the coil mutual induction so write somewhere mutual induction okay i will uh, first derive uh, if uh, write like this if phi be the flux phi be the flux linked with one coil when a current i i flows through
its neighboring coil neighboring coil okay neighboring coil so then phi and i are directly proportional more is the current flowing through the first coil i mean the second primary coil the more will be the magnetic field inside the uh, primary coil and similarly more will be the flux through the secondary one because magnetic field if magnetic field is more flux phi is equal to b into a so flux phi linked with the secondary will be more so it is very much clear that if phi be the flux linked with one coil when a current i flows through its neighboring coil then it is found that phi directly proportional to i more current more magnetic field more flux phi is equal to b into a so phi proportional to i so phi is equal to some constant m into i this m is nothing but phi by i and is called mutual inductance mutual inductance or coefficient of mutual induction or coefficient of mutual induction so in board examination sometimes the question has been asked what do you mean by mutual inductance then you need not to define mutual induction mutual induction is the phenomena due to which by virtue of which an induced emf induced current flows through one coil when a varying current flows through the neighboring coil that is mutual induction the phenomena is mutual induction but the question is about mutual inductance then you have to define phi by flux linked per unit current flowing through the coil so if i is equal to 1 ampere then m is equal to phi means mutual inductance is numerically equal to the flux phi linked with one coil when unit current flows through its neighboring coil so now you can write the definition mutual inductance mutual inductance of two coils of two coils is numerically equal to numerically equal to magnetic flux linked with one coil when unit current current that is 1 ampere flows through flows through its neighboring coil neighboring coil so this is one of the definition how to define mutual inductance remember mutual inductance depends upon geometry m depends upon geometry that is area of each turn geometry of of coil second factor is number of turns in each coil number of turns in each coil so these are the factors and one more factor is there that is orientation relative orientation between the coils just note it and then take a snapshot i will rub the board yeah yeah why not this abc can be see this condition a the two coils are placed nearby so this is one of the solenoid the another one is s2 so when current passes through s1 obviously there will be magnetic field lines because magnetic field exist and that field lines goes like this so some of the field lines will also link with the secondary coil then there must be a change in flux in the secondary also because of that induced emf is produced in secondary coil induced current will flow through the secondary coil but in second figure say if you place the coil just like this here is your coil then in that condition 
the magnetic field is along this direction whereas the area vector of this one is along this direction then area vector and magnetic field are perpendicular so what is flux linked with this that is flux linked with the secondary coil s2 will be zero then no flux through secondary no question of induced current no yeah no no question of induced current and in third part c c figure c s1 s2 so now the two coils are placed one above the other so then if you pass a current i through s1 through s1 there must be a magnetic field inside s1 that is field lines will be linked with the secondary also because primary and secondary are placed over each other so then maximum number of field lines will be linked with the secondary so obviously the induced emf induced current will be more in second case a uh, third case c in figure c yeah clear clear okay then you can define mutual inductance on the basis of induced tmf also so how will you define mutual inductance on the basis of self that is uh, induced tmf so we are introducing you have written induced tmf is minus d phi by dt remember this phi is for magnetic flux magnetic flux it is not the electric flux so then you may write minus d by dt of phi so what was phi phi is equal to mi remember mi m stands for mutual mutual inductance mutual inductance or coefficient of mutual induction so then this is minus m di by dt if you take the mod that is mod of e then it is m di by dt no problem then how will you define m m is equal to mod of e divided by di by dt <coughs> mod of e divided by di by dt and if you consider di by dt is 1 ampere per second 1 ampere per second then m is equal to e that is mutual inductance is numerically equal to the induced emf when a varying current varying that's why di by dt so when a varying current of rate of change 1 ampere per second or rate of change unity flows through the coil and that is never in coil so let me write the definition in word because in cbsc sometimes it has been seen that a students can write the mathematical expression easily but unable to write it in word so you have to put yourself in practice writing a definition writing a particular term about in words also so mutual inductance mutual inductance of two coils two coils is numerically equal to emf induced in one coil when a varying current varying means a current which which is changing may increase or may decrease so the, if the increase or decrease rate is 1 ampere per second that is in every second it is going to be increased by 1 ampere or it is going to be decreased by 1 ampere so in both the case whether the flux is increasing or decreasing in both the case induced emf is generated in the circuit and if the circuit is closed then induced current so in one coil when a varying current of rate of change rate of change unity that is 1 ampere per second flows through the neighboring coil through its neighboring or never coil or neighboring coil 
So this is the another way to define mutual inductance. So if the question comes in CBC like define mutual inductance, it is up to you. You can define mutual inductance in terms of that is uh, uh, phi is equal to mi in terms of current. You can define the mutual inductance in terms of cell uh, that is uh, induced EMF also. So it is up to you. Remember the unit of mutual inductance is unit of M which is mutual inductance is that is uh, M is equal to phi by so phi which is Tesla meter square Tesla meter square is also known as Weber W E B E R Weber per ampere so this Weber per ampere Weber per ampere so writing ampere A should not be capital it should be small writing Weber W should be small but if you are writing in abbreviated form W by A Weber per ampere so Weber per ampere is nothing but Henry H E N R Y or if you are writing in short that is abbreviated form it is H only so Henry so this is the unit of mutual inductance you can write the unit on form this formula also so again you can write EMF which is volt divided by di by dt ampere per second so this is, this is volt second per ampere this is also known as one henry henry one henry so this is the unit of mutual inductance now mutual inductance of two long solenoid mutual inductance of two long solenoid take the snapshot i will rub the board yeah taken done then mutual inductance of mutual inductance right on the heading of two long solenoid mutual inductance of two long solenoid so mutual inductance of two long solenoid okay now we are discussing different cases case one uh, there may be a situation where the two coils though in solenoid the coils are placed very close to each other there should not be any gap between the two turns but I am showing some gap just to make it visible for you so this is one of the coil okay now I am making the another coil which is inside the first one of same cross section area dotted dotted okay dot 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 to make it like this okay so the thing is cross section area I mean the number of turns the first thing is this is secondary primary this is secondary S2 now coil S1 coil S2 and both of them have same common length L both the coil are of same length L and the number of turns in primary and secondary may be different depending upon your choice so let N1 is the number of turns number of turns per unit length per unit length of coil S1 ok then what about N2 number of turns per unit length per unit length in coil of coil S2 now two coils are there S1 and S2 one above other now L common length L common length common length of solenoid 
and then a common area that is area common area of each turn each turn of the coils okay common area so area is a only area of each turn each turn is a circular loop and if it is circular loop it must have some area pi r square so then if you pass a current i i1 through coil s1 then because of the current i1 in coil s1 there must be a magnetic field inside the coil s1 so then you just write number total number of turns that is n1 can be written as capital n1 by l and similarly n2 should be written as capital n2 by l where capital n1 is the total number of turns in s1 so this n1 is what is n1 total number of turns number of turns in s1 qual s1 and what about capital n2 this is total number of turns number of turns in coil s2 solenoid s2 okay s1 and s2 are two solenoids so two long solenoids we are discussing about two long solenoids so then n1 n2 so when we pass a current i1 through the first solenoid then what is the magnetic field inside the first solenoid so magnetic field b1 therefore magnetic field inside solenoid s1 or coil s1 you may say solenoid s1 so it's how much mu not n1 i1 mu not n i it is the magnetic field inside a solenoid we have already studied this one in ampere segundal law how to find the magnetic field inside a solenoid so then uh, this is magnetic field b1 okay if i ask you what is the flux linked with the s2 then what will be your answer flux linked with the s2 so if you are getting magnetic flux a uh, magnetic field then flux magnetic flux flux linked with linked with solenoid s2 solenoid s2 so magnetic flux through one circular loop of s2 is equal to b1 into a but this is for one loop since you have total number of loops n2 in second solenoid that is s2 secondary so the number of turns should be multiplied because flux linked with each turn should be added flux is a scalar quantity so total number of flux linked with the secondary will be n2 b1 into a area of cross section i mean cross uh, area of each turn they are uh, area is common for both the solenoid so n2 b1 a so n2 and what is b1 mu not n1 i1 into this a if i ask you what is the magnetic this is total magnetic flux linked with the solenoid s2 remember this is total so it will be better if i write total total magnetic flux linked with solenoid s2 n2 b1 a n2 mu not n1 i1 we have just plus the value of b1 and then this a okay now if i ask you what is the uh, if uh, m uh, say this is phi 2 1 flux magnetic flux linked with solenoid s2 due to current flowing in s1 so due to current flowing in s1 so should i write uh, due to current flowing in s1 then it will be more clear okay if m21 be the mutual inductance be the mutual inductance then m21 is what 
flux linked with 2 due to 1 divided by current flowing in 1. Remember, flux linked with 1 coil divided by current flowing through its neighboring coil. So, divided by I1. So, this is phi. Phi to 1 you have already calculated. Phi to 1 by I1 is what? Mu naught N1 then capital N2 into A. You may write phi to 1 m to 1 is equal to mu naught then n1 this n1 can be written as n1 by l ok so n1 by l then this n2 into cross section area i mean area of each turn of the loop so mu naught n1 n2 a by l is the mutual inductance now tell me what are the factors upon which mutual inductance depend this depends upon n1 and n2 number of turns in the two coils then A, geometry of the coil. What is area of each loop in the two coils? And then length L, this factor. L is also there. And if a um, ferromagnetic substance, say core material, they are, now the core material is uh, air or vacuum. If air or vacuum is replaced by some ferromagnetic material whose relative permeability is mu r, then mutual inductance will be mu r times. Then you you just take the snapshot i will rub i will rub the lower part yeah so if you find if the two coils were okay i'm rubbing this portion if a core of relative permeability, relative permeability mu r is inserted inside the coils, then m21 is what? Mu naught mu r will also come. I mean mutual inductance will increase N1, N2 by L into A. So this is with core and the first expression is without core. Means air or vacuum. Okay. But if a current I2, remember M21 does not depend upon I1. Whatever current you are passing through S1, that term I1 is not here. So, M21 is independent of the current passing through the solenoids. Now, what will happen instead of S1 if we pass current through S2? Will your answer be same or it will differ? Let me see. So, I am rubbing this right part because you have already taken the snapshot of this part. Now, so instead of passing current through S1, now we are allowing the current to pass through, pass through S2. So, the, let the current be I2. Then current through S2 will pass, finally it will come out like this. So, if I2 be the current passing through S2, let I2 be the current passing through through S2. Now, the current through S1 is stopped. Now, no need to uh, pass the current through S1. I have just disconnected the battery and then allow the current to pass through S2. Then what will be the uh, magnetic field inside S2? So, if the magnetic field inside S2 is B2, then B2, B2 is equal to mu naught N2 I2. Remember, N2 is the number of turns per unit length in solenoid S2. B2 is the, uh, N2 is the number of turns per unit length in solenoid S2. I2, the current flowing through S2. And mu naught is the absolute permeability of free space or vacuum. Now, the medium inside it is maybe air or maybe vacuum. So, B2 is equal to mu naught N2 I2.
Now, if I ask you what is the magnetic flux linked with 1 due to 2, since you are passing current through S2, so let us find the flux linked with 1 due to current flowing through 2. So, that is called 512. So, if 512 is the total flux, total magnetic flux linked with S1 when current is flowing through S2. Okay, then 512 is now whatever is the magnetic field inside the S2, the same magnetic field will exist inside S1 because S1 and S2 are have the common area. So, magnetic field will be same magnetic field will be linked with the S1 also. So, then magnetic field V2 into cross section area, I mean area of each turn into number of total number of turns in S1. So, total number of turns is N1 only. This is the total flux. Total flux linked with S1 due to current flowing through S2. So, this is equal to N1 and what is the value of B2? This is mu naught, N2, I2, then A. This is 512. Now, tell me what is magnetic? If M12 is the mutual inductance, is the mutual inductance, mutual inductance of coil 1 with respect to coil 2, of two coils, of two coils, then M12 is flux linked with S1 and the current flowing through S2. Current flowing through S2 is I2 only. Now tell me 512 by I2 is nothing but mu naught capital N1 small n2 into A. Yeah. So you may write mu naught capital N1 and what is a small n2? This is capital N2 by L, number of turns per unit length into A. Again, what you see, mutual inductance M12 or M21, they are exactly same. So, whether you are passing current through S1 or passing current through S2, in both the case, mutual inductance will remain same. So, it does not depend. And actually, mutual inductance does not depend the current flowing through the coil. It is independent of the current. So, the final result is M12 is equal to M21 and say this is M and is mu naught N1 N2 A divided by L. Huh. If a core is inserted of relative permeability mu r, then expression will be mu naught mu r also. N1 N2 A by L. N1 A, N2 A by L. You got my point? Take the snapshot. I will, yeah, I will rub the board. And the next part is, now what will happen? What will happen if the coils have different area? I mean, area of each turn in the coil are not same. So, this one has different area, first one. Second one has, may, they, it may have a smaller area. Then what will happen for the mutual inductance? So, we are talking about the second case. Now, I am rubbing this figure and I am making it again. So, mutual inductance, okay, the assumptions will remain same, N1, N2, everything will remain same, only the figure is slightly changed. This is one of the coil. Almost same. Okay. So, the first coil, S1. And the second one is A 
it has a smaller cross section area you may say area of each turn so this is the figure but what is common so this is s2 this one is s2 the upper part is this is s2 but both the coils s1 and s2 have common length l okay they differ only in cross section area so this uh, bigger one has cross section area say capital a smaller one has cross section area small a okay area of each turn now this time the area is not common it is different but length same okay so then if i ask you uh, capital a small n1 that will be capital n1 by l1 l only and what about a small n2 this is capital n2 by l only and then uh, area of bigger one is capital a area of a smaller cross section is a small a these things have been already reflected in figure <coughs> now let me pass a current i1 through s1 then magnetic field inside the bigger one so then magnetic field inside s1 so if it is b1 then b1 is equal to mu not n1 i1 okay on the same uh, basis so this is mu not and you may write this n1 as capital n1 by l n1 by l okay this magnetic field exists throughout the bigger solenoid so you know, I had a bigger cross section area and is uniform yeah, well inside the solenoid everywhere except the end points at end points it will be half okay half mu naught and i but uh, uh, this smaller solenoid that is a solenoid of a smaller cross section area is lying well inside the bigger one so the same magnetic field will be linked with the a smaller solenoid s2 also yeah same magnetic field because magnetic field throughout this volume is same since s2 is placed inside s1 so same magnetic field will be linked with the smaller solenoid also a smaller not in length smaller in the sense cross section area so smaller cross section area now tell me what is magnetic flux linked with two due to current flowing in one flowing in one this is equal to magnetic field b1 into area of a smaller solenoid area of each turn which is a small a you may write somewhere small a stands for small a stands for yeah capital a area of each turn of s1 qual s1 and a small a area of each turn of qual s2 qual s2 okay so flux linked with solenoid 2 due to current flowing in 1 is equal to magnetic field inside s1 so whatever is the magnetic field inside s1 the same magnetic field will be linked with the s2 also s2 also because s2 is lying inside s1 and inside s1 there is a uniform magnetic field so v1 is the magnetic field inside s2 and then take the area of s2 area of each turn so this gives the flux linked with one turn since it has total number of turns n2 so multiplied by n2 also this gives the total magnetic flux linked with s2 now n2 and what is b1 b1 is mu naught n1 by l into cross section area a uh, mu naught n1 then i1 is also there no? this is i1 so you write i1 also then a small a is the cross section area of that s2 qual s2 now if i ask you mutual inductance of 2 with respect to 1 so s2 with respect to 1 then flux linked with 2 due to current flowing in 1 divided by current flowing in s1 this will give you mutual inductance of s2 with respect to s1 
with respect to S1. So phi to 1 by I1, if you take it here, this is mu naught N1 N2 A divided by L. In a similar way, you can prove that if a current S2 is passed, so if a current S2, if a current I2 is passed through okay S2 instead of S1 now we are sending current through S2 okay then what is magnetic field inside S2 so if that is B2 then B2 is equal to mu naught and 2 I2 mu naught and 2 I2 now if I ask you what is the magnetic flux linked with 1 due to current flowing in 2 now remember here it is magnetic flux linked with 2 due to current flowing in 1. Now we are going to calculate total magnetic flux linked with 1 due to current flowing in 2. So you are sending current through S2. Instead of S1 now you are sending current through S2. So then 512 is equal to magnetic field inside. You know magnetic field is confined within the solenoid. So since magnetic field is lying inside this portion only, okay, and you are taking flux with the bigger solenoid, that is solenoid of bigger cross section area. So then you have to take the magnetic field B2 of this one only. And then what is the effective area of the bigger solenoid? If you are multiplying with the capital A, remember magnetic field is lying within this portion only. So no magnetic field is lying here, no field lines. So that's why no flux is linked with this portion as well as this portion as well as this portion. Since you are sending current through S2, through S2, so okay, okay, five, one, two. So you are sending current through S2. So magnetic field of solenoid S2 is confined within this volume only within this volume okay and you are going to find the magnetic flux through s1 so then you have you are you are taking the magnetic field of s2 solenoid s2 and then if you are taking the area whole area of that bigger one this area then it is not proper because here no magnetic field exists due to this solenoid Magnetic field of a solenoid is getting confined within the solenoid only. Outside the solenoid it is zero. So for, for, for this area, no flux. For this area, left out area, there will be no flux. So the effective area of S1 will be the area of the smaller, I mean S2. That is a solenoid of a smaller turn area. So then B2 into small a, if you are taking capital A, then you are, you are somewhere wrong, whole a. Why? Because you are sending current through S2. So why we will consider the magnetic field of S1? So magnetic field of S2 only, S2 only. Now the scenario has reversed. I will make the diagram once again. See. This is S1 and this is S2. I am making S2 smaller one. So what's the problem? Okay. So you are sending current S2 uh, through uh, current I2. So magnetic field will exist only within this area. Only within this area. Okay. Then if you have considered the magnetic field within this area, no magnetic field exists in this space, in lower half, that is this part. So then if you are taking whole area of the bigger one, then it will be not be justified. Because flux is equal to phi 2 1 means flux linked. When current is passed through S1, then magnetic field exists throughout this volume. And that's why you have taken magnetic field and area of this smaller one. 
because the smaller solenoid wire is lying well inside the magnetic field. But the bigger one, the whole portion is not lying well inside the magnetic field. The part of this bigger one is lying away from the magnetic field. So no flux will be linked with these portions. So that's why the effective area, effective area, No, 5 to 1, you are talking about 5 to 1, yeah, so 5 to 1 is magnetic field inside this bigger one into area of a smaller one because this is the flux linked with S2 due to current flowing in S1, so when you are calculating flux linked with S2 then you have to consider the area of S2 only. And since magnetic field is existing everywhere inside this S2, because the actually magnetic field is lying within this region. So the same magnetic field you can consider now through this solenoid also. But when you send current through S2, then magnetic field is lying confined within this portion. Then if you are taking the whole area, that is this much area, then what about the flux linked with this portion? What about the flux linked with this portion where there will be no magnetic field? So that's why it will not be proper. Magnetic field linked with, I mean flux linked with 1 due to current flowing through 2 is equal to then small a. Small a is the area of this second solenoid. So then B2 into A is the, uh, you have to take the affective area, affective area of S1 which comes into picture with the magnetic field. So what is the effective area of S1 through which the magnetic field lines will be linked? So only this much portion, this much area of S1 will have the magnetic field lines. And that's why we have considered small a only. And then B2, A and the number of turns in S1. So what is the number of turns in S1? N1. So then it is N1. And then B2, B2 you have written somewhere here, mu naught, okay, and 2, I2 into A. Now finally, I am writing it here, phi 1, 2 is equal to mu naught N1. And what about N2? N2 is capital N2 by L, common length, capital N2 by L and then I2 into A. So what is mutual inductance of solenoid S1 with respect to S2? Now you are calculating M12. Earlier you have calculated M21. So M12 is nothing but mu naught N1 N2 A divided by L because M12 is nothing but 512 divided by I2. 512 divided by I2. M 1 2 is 5 1 2 divided by 2 and this is equal to mu naught N 1 N 2 A by L. Now just compare these two M 1 2 M 1 2 both of them are same. So M 1 2 is equal to M 1 2 1 is equal to M and is equal to mu naught N 1 N2 small a by L. Remember, if two solenoids are there and the cross section, they differ in cross section area, the one is bigger and the other one has a smaller cross section area, then area which comes into the expression of mutual inductance will be the area of a smaller solenoid. I mean, solenoid of a smaller cross section area. So that area should be taken. That is, what is the area which is common? Common area is A only because this much portion is lying within the bigger one. Yeah, am I clear to you? So you have to consider the area of the smaller one. So if a smaller one has radius R2, the bigger one has R1, then it is pi R2 square divided by L. This way you can find the mutual inductance. In both the cases, so the answer will not alter whether you are sending current through S1 or S2 in both the case mutual inductance will remain same. That is mu naught N1, N2 cross section area 
of this small turns divided by the length of the solenoid. But there may be situation where length may not be same, cross section area may not be same. In that case, how do you find the mutual inductions? So we are doing the last part. Okay, should I rub it? Take the snapshot. Yeah. Take it. Second. Done. We are doing the third part. So if the solenoid, I will take only five, six minutes. So this is case three. So you have one bigger and the other one Now what is differing? Now this time lengths are not same. This is L2. Okay, cross section area they are also not same. This is S2. Okay, so this is S1, this is S2, S1, S2. Now you have to find the mutual inductance of 1 with respect to 2. Suppose a current I1 is passed. So if you send a current I1 through solenoid S1, then it is so mutual inductance is now uh, N2 and 1 is capital N1 by L1. Now what about N2? This is capital N2 by L2. Because L1 and L2 are different. Cross section area A that is for S1, area of each turn of S1, area of each turn of S2. Now magnetic field inside S1 when a current I1 is passing through S1, so if it is B1, then B1 is equal to yeah, mu naught N1 I1. Now this is mu naught and what is N1? Capital N1 by L1 into I1. Okay. Now tell me what is magnetic flux linked with 2 due to current flowing in 1? Then uh, the whole magnetic field, when a current I1 is passing through so node S1, then the magnetic field within the first solenoid is existing and it is uniform everywhere. So then flux is equal to magnetic field into area of a smaller one because you are taking flux linked with 2. So magnetic field into area gives you the flux but it is the flux with linked with one turn since total number of turns is N2 so multiply it by N2 also. So this is N2 and then what is B1? mu naught N1 by L1 into I1. One more term is there, A. Okay. Now, mutual inductance M21 is equal to phi21 divided by I1, this current. So, phi21 divided by I1 is how much? Mu naught N1 N2 A by L1. If you send a current I2, through solenoid S1, S2 instead of S1. Now, let us pass the current through solenoid S2. So, in that scenario, magnetic field B2 is equal to mu naught N2 I2. When current I2 is passed through S2. So, that's why this is mu naught and what is N2? Capital N2 by L2. Now, length is different. Then I2. Okay, now flux linked with 1 due to current flowing in 2 is equal to magnetic field B2 into, now again you have to consider, yeah, you have to consider the area of a smaller loop, 
since you are sending current through this S2, so magnetic field is getting confined within this area. So effective area of S1 should A only, through which the flux will be linked. Okay, then take it as a small a. So this is flux through one turn. And can you tell me what is the total number of turns? Well, what is the total number of turns in S1? So total number of turns in S1 is, yeah, N1. This, this capital N1. But not with the total N1. So not with the total capital N1. Only this much portion. So since number of turns per unit length of bigger one is N1, so on unit length number of turns is N1 in bigger one. So what is the total number of turns within L2 length of the bigger solenoid, solenoid of large cross section area, that is S1. So what is the total number of turns in the length L2, L2 of this solenoid S1. So within the length L2, the number of turns will be N1 L2. And this is the effective number of turns of bigger solenoid through which the flux will be linked. And the remaining turns, with remaining turns, there will be no flux. So we should not take the total number of turns of N1. We should take only this much turns. So this is the effective number of turns. That is N1 L2. So multiply it by N1 L2. Am I clear to you? So you, of unit length of S1 consists of N1 turns. So what is the total number of turns of S1? in the length L2, since this shorter solenoid has length L2, so within L2 length of the bigger solenoid, how many number of turns will be there? That is N1, L2 is the number of turns, number of turns in S1, okay, which through which the flux will be linked, through which flux will be linked, will be linked. So, sir, uh, just uh, mind this portion. So, this is a B2, A, N1, L2 and just put the value of B2. So, B2 is what? Mu naught, N2 by L2, then I2, okay, then a small a, then N1, then L2. N1, small N1, okay. So this L2, L2 will be cancelled out. So what you get finally? It's mu naught N2, I2. Then small a, and what about N1? N1 is capital N1 by L1. So capital N1 by L1, okay, that is phi 2, 1, phi 1, 2. 1, 2. Now, if, take the snapshot or I can write it here also. Okay, okay, I can write. I can write. I have the space. So, then M, 1, 2, which is phi 1, 2 by current through solenoid S2. So, phi 1, 2 by I2 is what? Mu naught N1, N2, small a divided by L1. Which one is greater? Yeah? So, a small, a small N1 is replaced by capital N1 by L1. Capital N1 by L1. Remember, capital N1 and N2 are the total number of turns. A small N1, a small N2 are the number of turns per unit length. Per unit length. Number of turns per unit length. So, it is very much important that M12 is equal to M21 is equal to the final result is mu naught n1 n2 then small a by l1 is the final expression yeah is it visible to you this portion visible yeah take it done so we have discussed all total three cases of mutual inductance of two long solenoid. So remember, you have to consider the number of turns in both the solenoid N1 and N2. 
then take the area of a smaller solenoid, solenoid of a small cross section area, and then length of the bigger solenoid, bigger solenoid. If they have the same length, same cross section area, okay, no problem. You can consider area of any uh, loop that is S1, S2, and then length of any solenoid. They are common. If they have a smaller cross section area and then length, lengthwise same. Then length, you may take any one, L1, S1 or S2. And then area should be taken of the smaller solenoid. And the finally, if they have different length and different cross section area, then take the cross section area of the smaller one divided by the length of the bigger one. Mu naught N1, N2, A by L1. And if a ferromagnetic material of relative permeability mu R is inserted inside the solenoid, uh, I mean S1, S2, then or if the two coils are wounded on a soft iron core, then mu R term will also come into picture. That is mutual inductance will increase. Mutual inductance will increase. Okay, mu R times it will increase. So, am I clear to you? Yes.